uh, to this webinar. Um, in this webinar, I give you an overview uh, of debugging and tracing uh, features that the UDE, our universal debug engine, provides for developing and testing of AutoSAR-based applications. So before I start, um, a short overview of what you can expect from today's webinar. And the first uh, few minutes, I'd like to give you just a brief overview um, about the AutoSAR, um, in particular the AutoSAR Classic platform. And then we will have a look at the AutoSAR support in UDE, um, which is uh, or that is based on the on OT information. Um, and finally, um, uh, in the uh, last part of this webinar, because OT is yeah, more or less outdated, I'd like to introduce um, the new RT interface. And of course, um, in between, I will jump over to um, the UDE to show you the features um, of our AutoSAR support and practice. So let's get started and um, yeah, look what is behind AutoSAR. What is AutoSAR? So AutoSAR in a few words is an open standard that defines an automotive software architecture. Um, AutoSAR defines an interface between application software and the basic electronic functions of, of a vehicle um, or in a ECU. Um, the AutoSAR uh, itself is a development partnership of um, automotive OEMs, um, of tier ones suppliers and also of two vendors. Um, this includes also PLS, uh, so we are part of AutoSAR. Um, the main goal of the AutoSAR is that uh, costs and development time should be reduced. Um, the, this can be achieved by reusing already developed software components or reducing, um, yeah, reusing tools and methodologies. And this can be also achieved by, or the main goal is also the decoupling of the hardware and software so that both are independent of each other. Um, AutoSAR based software development um, increases scalability. So, it enables the transfer of functions to different uh, vehicle platforms, for example, and also to different OEMs. So everything can be exchanged and that reduces costs. Um, that can increase software quality. And uh, of course, that helps you um, to fulfill today's and also future requirements. Um, on safety, availability, or maintainability, um, and so on. Um, to achieve this uh, independence of software and hardware, the AutoSAR um, standard introduces a layered architecture. Um, this is an example for the AutoSAR Classic platform. Um, each of these layers create a new level of abstraction so that the underlying hardware can be easily uh, replaced and also the software components can be um, exchanged. Um, there are some services here. <clears throat> um, one of these services uh, is the system service, which uh, may contain also a operating system, a real-time operating system. Um, it's called the AutoSAR OS, and this is based on the OSEC. So the OSEC, um, yeah, it's a former standard that was created by uh, German um, car manufacturers and uh, suppliers, uh, suppliers of um, electronic components. And um, yeah, it's uh, outdated and uh, yeah, don't exist uh, anymore, but the principles and the concepts behind the OSEC 
uh, were incorporated um, into the specification of the Autosar operating systems and also extends um, the uh, the or the OSIC is OSIC concepts are extended by the Autosar operating systems. Uh, but there is a backward compatibility uh, to the OSIC standard. Um, the layers here, the service, the ECO abstraction layer, and also the microcontroller abstraction layer um, are known as the basic software of your ECU. And on top of the basic software, uh, you will find the runtime environment here. Um, the um, runtime environment provides interfaces uh, so that the application layer or the software components uh, that you are developing, uh, developing um, can communicate to each other or also to uh, use the functions that are provided by the basic software. Um, the communication between the software components in the um, um, application layer here uh, can either happen between software components um, on the same ECU or uh, across uh, the boundaries of ECUs by using uh, the communication soft, uh, the communication services of the basic software and uh, interfaces, physical interfaces like you have in the car, uh, Flextray, CAN, uh, automotive Ethernet, and so on. Uh, from the perspective of the application layer, uh, there is no difference. Um, it is. It doesn't matter if the software components use using the hardware of one ECU uh, or um, communicate to software components of the other ECUs. So the RTE, so the the runtime environment. Um, acts as a communication bus um, that is spread across all the ECUs and that's why it's named virtual functional bus. So um, this is this was only a, a very broad overview of what Autosar is in general. So I um, will not go into the deeper details here because that would, um, uh, yeah, it's not the topic of the today's um, webinar here. Um, so now I'd like to come to the, the actual topic, which is debugging in runtime analysis of such an Autosar system. Um, of course, if you have uh, a Autosar software, a binary, so from the debugger's perspective, uh, a such a Autosar based application is only a piece of software that is running on a microcontroller. Um, you can use all the uh, normal debugger functionality like breakpoints, setting breakpoints, uh, look into the code, uh, single stepping, look into variables, and so on. Um, you can also look into the, the uh, structures and variables that are part of the the Autosar stack or the Autosar operating system. Um, but if you are looking into that, uh, you have to interpret uh, their meanings by yourself. So there's no uh, help by the debugger, by a, a standard debugger, um, which gives you some um, better understanding of, of the Autosar system. Um, and you have no knowledge in the standard debugger um, about the task of your operating system, but um, I think you will agree with me that this is one of the most needed information when you want to debug a operating system or a op application that is based on, on an Autosar operating system. So it is very important for, for developing or for understanding your system, if you know which task of your operating system is currently active and consumes CPU time um, when you hit a breakpoint or stepping through your code. 
And that's why you need, uh, in addition to the debugger, which is uh, mostly called AutoSAR or in general operating system awareness. So the AutoSAR awareness uh, in UDE is a plug-in um, that adds this knowledge, the knowledge about the AutoSAR internal structures and objects to the debugger. Um, basically, it tells the debugger which memory locations and which variables um, represent which objects or state uh, states in the in the operating system, especially in the AutoSAR OS. So in the past, the most common way, uh, or yeah, uh, up to now, not only in the past, the, the most common way was to rely on the so-called ORTI file. So ORTI stands for OSEC Runtime Interface, and here you have the uh, the reference back to, to the OSEC standard again, um, which was the basis of, of uh, the Autos operating system. So the ORT here uh, defines a file that contains all the necessary information for the debugger uh, to present uh, Autosar specific information during debugging. So it the file itself is created during the generation process of uh, the AutoSAR application, or uh, sometimes also named the AutoSAR ECU. Um, this uh, generation is done automatically, um, and the um, resulting RT file can be then uh, read by the um, AutoSAR awareness plugin of the debug tool. So the RT um file contains all the information you need um, to uh, know which memory locations um, represent which um, object of the operating system and also which variables are there and how to interpret them in um, the um, um, context of, of the AUTOSAR operating system. And this includes also the location of the task control blocks and also the task pointer, which we need to get the current task. Um, if we do stop mode debugging, that means breakpointing, single stepping, and so on. And also uh, to do some um, tracings, that means recording the execution of uh, functions and tasks over time and um, yeah, provide a visualization of the task executions uh, of your system. But I think this can be better understand if you look at an example. That's why I'd like to jump to the UDE um, and uh, show you how it looks like uh, if you are uh, to uh, out of server debugging. Um, I have prepared um, before a uh, workspace. Um, workspace is in in, in our uh, speaking the um, all that you need uh, for a debugger session uh, containing all the windows uh, or the um, the binaries that you want to load to your target system. I have prepared one based on um, the, the ERICA uh, operating system, uh, which is a little bit adapted by us. And um, I use the ERICA here in this, in this webinar because it's free and open source. And I'd like, uh, I, I don't like to, to violate any rights of commercial AutoSAR uh, stack and uh, OS vendors here uh, during this webinar. Okay, I have uh, loaded the application or uh, loaded the workspace, and uh, right now I'd like to load uh, the application. Um, uh, this is um, the an ELF file containing the operating system and some application stuff here into a multi-core system. This is in uh, I have connected an Aurix TC3 here to the debug tool. And um, I, I do debugging on the real target. And uh, the first thing is I flash 
the um, all the binaries and all the the code to, to the flash memory of the RX. Um, and then um, then we can start the application. And so um, we see all the cores are running. Some something uh, is uh, we are doing here, or the the application is doing something. I see some some LEDs flashing here on on the board, uh, on the tri board, and um, yeah, yeah. Now um, we want to start debugging, and the first thing is we have to enable the Autosort plugin. This can be done using the config menu, and we have here um, a list of available add-in components. Uh, I check the Autosaw uh, support here for RT and RT. RT is uh, uh, something new that I want to explain a little bit later. Press OK. Um, and then um, I can um, go to the Fuse menu and I got this uh, Autosaw support entry here and I can open the window for that. And uh, the Autosar add-in needs some information that is provided by the ORTI file. So the plugin asks me to provide such an ORTI file, um, which is already available. And then the ORTI information is read by the UDE. So we see here um, um, some information um, that are a part of the ORTI information here. Um, depending on what um, it's present in the in the ORTI file, I got some tabs here uh, on this window. Uh, in this specific case, I have information about the used cores here, which is not RT standard. And this is a, a little addition here, because RT itself is not um, multi-core ready, so you need some additional stuff here to get uh, the, um, the, the multi-core uh, representation here in this in this view. Uh, but we, we have done this here and you see we have six cores running um, and um, also tasks uh, can be seen which are present in our uh, operating system here. So um, if I let me put it on the right side, if we, for example, set a breakpoint somewhere, for example, on a function in core one, and then, then we see, okay, we hit this breakpoint, the system is halted, and we see the status of our operating system here um, uh, at this breakpoint. So we are and on core one, we are uh, in a task called task core one active alarm on core four. Um, we can jump. Um, or we can look at the um, at the task control block here by uh, using um, watch expressions here that we can um, use to look into the uh, details of uh, the task control block that are defined by the operating system. We see some information about um, the uh, the task type. Then some the the, the status uh, the task is running um, and something like that. And for all the values that are uh, seen here in the several tabs, uh, you have the possibility um, if there are any um, um, anything to show in detail, then you can, for example, add such a watch expression. For example, the task state. Um, of uh, the task control block uh, number seven, for example. You can also switch here in the window uh, to the, uh, the tasks 
um, and uh, you see which tasks are running at the moment because we are, have a multi-core system. Uh, there are um, uh, more than one task uh, in uh, running um, at the moment, so on each core one. And uh, you can also uh, yeah look into um, the the stack uh, information. And here you see that it, it's very important that the Ortify is complete and also valid, because this is not complete, you see here some invalid stack addresses. So only for the for the first entry there is, a, or for three entries, we have a valid stack uh, information available in, in the Ortify. So there is something which is not correct. Uh, and that's a, a very uh, crucial point here. Um, if the Ortify is not uh, complete or not correct, uh, also the debugger can not present you uh, correct information. So this is, is a very important point that I would like to emphasize. Uh, you can also switch to um, the stack and look at uh, in the memory window, for example, you see um, yeah, here the uh, stack fill pattern, which helps you to uh, look at the stack utilization. Um, we are preparing right now an automatic analy analyzing um, for the stack utilization, but it's not part of this specific UTE version, version here. Um, okay, and then we can, for example, um, do some steppings and look in what happens um, in the in the task tab here. You see, uh, if I hit a, another breakpoint, then uh, the running task has the task has changed and you see also that all the values that are uh, updated and have a new value, got a new value are uh, highlighted in red. So the green bar means this is the active task and uh, all the red uh, ones are uh, new values um, which may be interested um, for your uh, debugging purposes. Okay, um, then we can also uh, look at um, some runtime um, information. So if we start a system, we, I disable all the breakpoints and start the system again. Uh, and then we want to see the executions of all the tasks of one core, for example. And for that, we are using a trace. Trace is a hardware feature that uh, almost all the microcontrollers provide. Um, there are different types of traces. Uh, for the Infineon, I use the so-called MCDS trace. Um, this is not that important for you at the moment because um, we hide all the complexity of this trace system um, in a um, configuration dialog, which is quite simple. Uh, in the window, I click on the um, a right click and uh, this menu gets opened and uh, I can configure the trace, the task trace for that uh, operating system here. And we are interested in a task trace of the core zero and also a code trace of the core zero in parallel. Um, I use this these arrows here to to put it into the uh, on the, the right um, box here. Um, this enables uh, the different trace types, and then I press configure, and then I can uh, use the trace feature. For that, I open another window, which is called the execution sequence chart, uh, which uh, we want to use to uh, look into the um, task execution over time. And then I have to start the trace, make sure that the application is running, of course, but it is. And then I stop the trace in this case here, I have to stop it manually because I have no condition defined um, for stopping the trace. And then I can start the ana analysis function of, of this window here. And it takes some seconds uh, to collect all the data. Um, 
and then we will see right now uh, that we have information from Core Zero and some tasks were executed. I can do the use the auto, auto zoom functionality and then I can zoom in and I can now see the executed tasks. Here's something happening in between and then I can enable some labels here and then I can see, okay, um, which task uh, was running at which point in time. And then I can, for example, do some time measurements by using the uh, some uh, special keys and the mouse. And then I can, for example, measure uh, time, um, yeah, running times of, of the task and can analyze my system and find, for example, bottlenecks or uh, some um, yeah, timing issues here in my application and my operating system. Um, and here you, we see uh, one of the drawbacks of Orti <clears throat> because um, tasks are, have not only a stop state and a running state, they may have a suspended state or a ready state and um, the method that um, Orti allows us to do some task tracing is basically um, based on observing the, um, the task, running task variable of the operating system. Uh, and there is um, here no way to get um, more information into the trace uh, that allows us a deeper investigation of of the of the runtime behavior of the system and um, of the the current states or the states of of the uh, task here, and that's why uh, and um, for other reasons there is a new approach and a new uh, yeah standardized um, and debugging uh, interface available in the Autosar and this is called the um, the RT. So we have seen that, um, yeah, or I've told you at the beginning that RT is no longer state of the art. And we saw one of the drawbacks of RT um, related to the tracing, um, which is uh, not complete and also not standardized um, using the RT. Um, not standardized means that each available trace tools, so there are other examples um, uh, than UDE uh, as a trace tool. Each of these trace tools has its own, own implementation for doing trace. And that makes um, debugging tracing not compatible and not uh, interchangeable between the tools. And this is uh, not that what uh, Autosar wants. Um, so there is a goal to uh, make them compatible and um, yeah, have a, a clear standard um, of what um, is presented um, using debugging and tracing. And they are also defined in the OSEC, um, a hook mechanism that is um, that can be used for tracing. Um, we do not use the OSEC hooks in, uh, in UDE for, uh, for the OTI-based um, uh, stuff, but uh, there is a hook uh, mechanism available that allows you uh, a more detailed tracing, but this hook mechanism um, is is uh, is too intrusive. That means uh, you influence the runtime behavior by that, and this is not uh, what we want. That uh, the debugger and uh, also the tracing tool influences the runtime behavior of your system. And there was a wish uh, that uh, this hook mecha mechanism and also the um, the OT is replaced um, and uh, that we have a more 
a non-intrusive mechanism and um, for that reason the autosol standard has um, focused or the autosol uh, community and autosol members uh, has focused in the last um, couple of, of years um, on uh, the topic of debugging and also tracing and um, implemented or defined a, a new hook mechanism uh, that is now standard uh, standardized and so the um, two vendors, the debug two vendors um, have a clear idea uh, what to do. Um, the, um, the aims was that the hooks uh, should be minimal intrusive. That means uh, only for uh, specific events, uh, the hooks should be um, uh, present and executed there. And so the runtime behavior sh should be um, affected only um, as a minimum extent. Um, the hooks uh, in the operating system um, are generated now automatically. Um, during the generation of the Autosar software. Um, and um, from that, uh, not an Ortify uh, should be used uh, and defined. Um, it is a new file or file format defined, which is called RT. And um, this is, replaces the, the RT completely and defines an interface between the build tools and also the debugging and tracing tools. Um, and there is another step or a, a next step also defined or specified in the artist uh, in the artist um, not in the RT, in the Altistar standard. Sorry, um, the standardization now also covers the export of the recorded trace information by the trace tools so that the exported trace can be also used uh, right now uh, by other analysis tools for deeper uh, timing analysis. So there are uh, timing analysis tools on the market uh, that right now can uh, use exported trace information from each of the trace tool vendors and without any um, uh, without um, being compatible uh, to each other. So uh, for the Autosar awareness add-ins for the debuggers and trace tools, um, there is now the so-called RT description available. And this RT description is part of an XML file, um, which is used in the, uh, in the Autosar uh, development or generation process uh, to provide all the information of the ECU configuration, uh, the operating system configuration, and so on. And uh, the uh, debug information and the tracing information, also the hook information, are now part of this um, so called R, um, ARXML file uh, and um, as a so called module or a, um, I think uh, the right term is container in, in this Autosar XML file. So um, the trace, uh, uh, as I told you before, is now based on um, the RT hook mechanism. It's and it's uh, it's now more detailed in terms of the of the states that are um, available or that are possible uh, in the operating system for the tasks. Um, so we are not relying anymore on the running task variables uh, as we did on the RT. Um, it is now rather based on these hooks um, so that we can now um, show the, or the, uh, the several states here. So the hooks uh, that are defined in the, in the RT module description um, are base or are generated automatically during the generation of the Autosar system or the Autosar uh, ECU. Um, and as an input, we use the RXML file, um, which describes the complete system and also the hooks, of course. 
And there is a RT hook generator, uh, which uh, reads this, this description and creates the hook implementation, uh, which is um, yeah, a C file in the header file uh, that um, is compiled together with all the other sources of your um, auto source system. And um, um, all this stuff is linked together and uh, yeah, available in the binary at the end. And the RT hook generator, um, that part is in the res uh, responsibility of the debug tool vendor. And for that reason, um, the latest versions of UDE uh, also come with um, a RT hook generator that is developed by by PLS, uh, by, by us. Um, and it's quite simple to use. It has to be invoked um, in the Autosort bidding process. So it's a command line tool. Um, and uh, as an input, you use the RXML file uh, and uh, you get as an output a C file and the header file that can be used uh, in your build process of the, of the Autosort ECU um, binary. Okay, and then uh, let's have a look at how it works. Um, unfortunately, I have no complete build process for the Erica OS. It's a bit outdated here, and so no, no RT support uh, was uh, is available for this. So we had to um, to create this RT file manually, but I can load it. Um, I have to switch the file type here and you can open um, the, the RT file right now. And you see uh, there is uh, nothing except of the, the hook, def hook definitions here available uh, or the other stuff which we had with the RT um, are not present here in this RT definition um, because of um, yeah, uh, we did this manually and um, we use this artifier only for um, showing the, the trace stuff. But the workflow is, is, is quite the same. You can uh, configure the trace uh, right now based on the hook implementation. Um, and we did a, yeah, a task trace and also a trace of the interrupts. Uh, right now, I configured the trace, uh, make sure the application is running, then I start the trace again. Uh, and I have to stop this trace also manually. And then I can do quite the same as we did before, start the trace analysis in the execution sequence chart here. And after a while, um, I can look into the executed tasks of the Corsio and also um, the executed uh, in, um, interrupts here. So this is this is uh, the first differentiator between the RT and in the RT um, file that we right now know uh, which was a which code uh, was a uh, belongs to an interrupt and um, which code belongs to a task. And then I can open both and uh, I can see here right now um, that we get more information about the uh, task state at a specific points in time. So uh, if it's running, if it's uh, suspect, uh, suspended or if it's ready. So this is new here and um, I think a, a good way uh, to start uh, analyzing your your application and analyzing and um, yeah, find bottlenecks in your Autosaw uh, application. Okay, I have to look at the time. So time is over. Um, I hope um, that uh, you found this webinar helpful and I'd like to, um, to thank you.